everyone, and welcome to the Pash On Podcast. Let's get started with your host, Brian Pash. Hi, this is Brian Pash, and welcome to another podcast interview on today's show. It is a reunion. I'm with Mark yeah. McGurin. He is the CEO and founder of McGurin Consulting. And it's so good to get back to some basics for 2024. We're going to talk about uh, lead management, sales process using AI, and how dealers can really turn around the performance of their BDC. Mark, welcome to the show. Brian Pash, BP in the house. It's been too long, brother. How are you doing? Man, I'm doing great. I am so glad to see your growth as a consultant. I've been watching you and Amber just focus on fitness. I'm so proud of her success with Orange Theory and 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 the kids are growing up. But Man. you and I, we're still focused on helping dealers. How's business been over the years uh, helping dealers with their sales process? Man, it's been a lot of fun, you know, for folks that don't know, you know, you and I worked together for five and a half, six years. And about six years ago, we, uh, you know, kind of went our separate ways and it's been a fun ride, you know, obviously navigating COVID, all the inventory shortages, all that fun stuff. But it's been a huge blessing that I've been able to, to go around the country and work with dealers uh, of all shapes and sizes, just in, in the day, help them connect with more customers and sell more cars that's the name of the game and so it's been a, it's been a lot of fun and i've watched you and miss Carrie. uh yeah. so it's been fun uh seeing you guys grow as well and staying busy so yeah it's good to reconnect again yeah and it was great to have you down at dmsc in austin we'll be back there right at the beginning of june june 2nd 3rd and 4th and you know mark i wanted to schedule this interview because as I've been working with dealer groups to help with their overall strategy, I'm still hearing frustrations with CRM platforms, support, and a lot of questions about AI. So today, I'd like to give dealers a blueprint mm -hmm. and talk about the different AI strategies that are out there. You know, we have Connect, Impel, Conversica, back in town, we'll talk yeah. about. <laughs> we have Drive Centric with some built-in AI tools. But let's start from the basics. For dealers who are not using AI tools in their lead follow-up, in their customer engagement process, have they mm -hmm. waited too long? Is it ready? Um, you know, I've always heard these concerns. I don't want to be on the bleeding edge, but it seems to me that they're way past that. Yes. Yeah, so uh, um, a couple things. So, A, you know, the biggest thing when it comes to a tool like this is what I like to say is if I was a dealer, would I use this tool? And I absolutely would use AI right now with the current tools that are available if I owned a dealership, without a doubt. Um, has there been growing pains over the years? Absolutely. Uh, but I think uh, where they're at with chat GPT growing, with their large, with they're embracing these, what are they, what I've learned called large language models that have, they're, and when they have these large language models, they are much more conversational. Prior to that, they were a little robotic. Uh, but now the, what I'm seeing out of these tools, it's absolutely amazing. They uh, Any dealer not on AI, they've not missed it. I think it's just going to get better. Uh, you know, I think the growing stages are gone. The kinks as a whole have been worked out for the most part. And I think it's just going to get better. But the reason dealers are frustrated that I found with AI that have tried to use it and said, you know what, this just doesn't work for us is it was a poor install between having the current CRM workflows and AI workflows work together. Too many times I've seen dealers just slap AI on their current workflows and it's just not as seamless as it could be. And they're really not using the tool as, as well or what it's intended to be. You know, and, and thanks for being transparent about that because you and I have seen the evolution uh, of that 
technology mm -hmm. when Conversica first came out. And I'm, we're going to pick up on that, but I, I just want to highlight one thing. Dealers who are listening, um, everyone's learning together, meaning the companies who are offering these tools are trying to figure it out themselves. The nice yep. thing about Mark is that he lives in Breeze working with any CRM of scale and he knows them all. And he's not selling a product. He's helping a dealer uh, make products work for their culture. And I think that's super important because training oftentimes is about how to use a product feature, but not how to integrate it into a sales process. And, and that's why I wanted to have this interview. So let's step back just a minute, Mark, because you and I were working together actively mm -hmm. with clients when Conversica first came out. And I remember dealers either loved it or hated it, but the dealers who hated it says, hey man, it's just stepping on my manual processes. So this conversation of mm -hmm. how do you integrate human interaction and connection with automated connection hasn't uh, really been a new conversation. What are you telling dealers uh, about that dance? You know, if we had to say that dance, mm -hmm. a lead comes in right today. Um, should the AI handle it all until they get a communication? I mean, AI isn't calling people, but right. you know, I've heard some people say, don't even call, man. If that lead comes in, if they won't respond to you via email or text, and then some AI doesn't do email. So um, <laughs> what do you, I don't think there's a simple answer, but when a dealer asks, what should I do? Is it really platform dependent? Um, it is going to be a little platform dependent because some of them will actually do emails and some of them are just SMS texts. And so that's going to be, uh, I'll address kind of both scenarios, regardless of the tool. Uh, and some actually, uh, Conversica only does email unless you kind of twist their arm to turn on text and pretty much sign your life away to make sure that you won't get, <laughs> they won't get sued. True story. Uh, but, uh, so lead comes in, let's say you get a new email and text, right? So AI for those listening will not replace the human interaction. I had a dealer a while back, uh, they use drive centric CRM and they came out with their latest and greatest over the summer. And he said, this is going to put you out of business. And he wasn't being mean about it. He was just like, man, you got to be careful of this. this. This might put you out of business. And I said, it's, it'll never put me out of business because uh, nothing will replace human interaction. You know, that's why people still are not buying cars at hundred percent online right now. Why? That's a little different, but there's still a human element. And then you got to want to see the car, but still people buy cars from people they know and they trust period. I still think that is true today than, and when it was true 30 years ago. And so uh, now has uh, digital, uh, you know, retail and whatnot uh, changed some of that? Absolutely. But at the end of the day is people still buy cars from people they know and they trust. So with that said is what do you do when that lead comes in? You got AI. My philosophy is, and, and, and I, I don't really care. Some people say you text an email, then you call my philosophy is you call first, call first, always call first, always call first. Because I, I, if I could talk to that consumer, right, I don't need AI. I don't need text. I don't need emails. I can communicate in a way where I can get the customer's information right then and there. And so let's say I don't get a hold of them. And, and what do you do at that point? So I'm going to call uh, and they got an email. AI is going to text and email that consumer almost immediately at that point which I love. Yeah, I absolutely love that there's going to be a constant connection, you know, here in Texas and other states, they're blue laws. So we're closed on Sundays. Uh, and so that, you know, we're closed at 10 o'clock at night, nine o'clock at night. And so AI can communicate during that time. And so I would let them email and text them. Right. And obviously if they don't have email, text them. And then uh, I would follow up. I would still do a personal email to the consumer. Now, one thing you got to do, turn off your autoresponders. I've seen that we install AI and then we still have an autoresponder. And so now they're getting a bazillion they're getting, emails. Yeah, they're they're yeah, getting they're, mixed messages. Exactly. Uh, and then the kicker also is 
So I'm going to call, text, and email right at the start. I believe in using every medium we have to connect with a consumer. And the kicker here, is, Brian, is what a lot of folks have done or I've not seen done is you've got to tweak up all your templates, all your texts, every, your written words of what you're saying to the consumer. You've got to introduce saying, hey, my name is Mark McGurin. My assistant blank, Hannah, or whatever her name is, the AI is the name, should have reached out to you by now. I wanted to go ahead and introduce myself. And so what it becomes is a tag team in a team, yes. not two separate individuals vying for the consumer's attention. And that's the problem that I see a lot of. And people are like, well, it's broken messages. And I got this person reaching out and this person reach out. Well, if done properly, it's a seamless process to where like a that is yeah. correct. And and you know what? I did some mystery shops and I haven't done it in a while. And I'm just going through this. And it's so true. Different people uh, take different approaches. I, I did it live, did it live um, at our last CXO meeting in Palm Beach. And I actually mystery shopped three of the dealer groups that are in the CXO network. And for one, one dealer, they never responded for over two hours. And this wow. was during business hours. <laughs> the other dealership never called. They only texted. And I'm just telling you how I felt as a consumer, even though it's mystery shop. The text was obviously automated. It didn't communicate to me that a salesperson was assigned. Mm -hmm. Um, I eventually got an email from a salesperson, but that text and that email didn't reference each other, but I never got a call. And it was kind mm -hmm. of a weird thing. I kind of expected like, Hey, I told them that I was in market for a car. I wanted to know if this car was still available. The text didn't reflect that. Mm -hmm. The, the email was pretty much a basic template of when can you come in? Didn't reference my my note. Ugh. No phone call. No phone call. So, oh my gosh. So it's like, okay, 2023, 20, we're still having this thing. Um, and then I had other people who are afraid to text. And I just coached a relatively large dealer group to enable texting because I showed them that I mystery shopped all their local competitors and they were all using texting. They turned texting on. In this case, they're using Impel and boom, their engagement yep. rate with the leads shot up. I mean, and now they're, you know, kind of kicking themselves. Wow, I should have turned on texting sooner. What do you it, say to dealers who are afraid to text? Oh, my gosh. Um, it is that, you know, when we trained years ago, we had what we called, I don't remember this, the four by 60 rule. And what that was is you get 100 leads in, and of those, you get 60% contact. And then they degrade 60%, and you end up with a 13% closing ratio. Well, with text, with AI, that first 60 goes away. You know, and this was when this was, you know, almost, you know, 10 years ago, Brian, that tech, you know, we weren't texting as much as we are now. Now, my connection rate with my clients is between 70 and probably there might be a month we hit 80% connection rate, but I would say average is going to be between 75 and 78%. Why is that? Text, period, end of story, without a doubt. It's how we communicate as a uh, nation, as consumers, is that's how we communicate. And not only that, it's the only form of communication that dealers have that assuming it's a good phone number, the consumer will read and get your message 100% of the time. Yeah, they yeah. might not listen to your voicemails and they might not see your emails, right? Because they go spam. And and so, or your team might not call the customer. <laughs> so, right, I mean, like, uh, uh, it's amazing when I look at, I read every text, but I do miss emails because I get many of them. Yep. So let's talk about the topic that's unpopular because, you know, we all have friends in the industry. We do. We do. And um, I'm not casting shade at this question, but you mentioned texting. And one yep. of the reasons why Drive Centric has really shot to being a extremely popular CRM is they 
really built this from the ground up as a communications platform, multi-channel, not like a lead follow-up trying to just get right. an appointment. And and I if I remember correctly, they were really one of the first to really push texting and, oh, without it, yeah. and video it, separation. Yeah, texting and video, they made it super simple. Uh, you know, uh, they're... In, in, What's also what was fantastic was their app. So many times the other CRMs, the app was kind of a bolt on knowing, oh crap, we need an app. And it was a not a good tool to use, whereas Drives was an extension of the CRM. And so uh, you could do everything you wanted and then some very easily, whereas mm -hmm. other CRMs, it's a little more cumbersome. Um, and so they're so still doing well in helping dealers uh, increase their connection rates. Because, without a doubt. Because, and I'm hearing that, you know, dealers are getting the best overall performance from drive centric. Are you, are you feeling that in the field? As a whole, yes. So it's, 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 if you're using drive, there's not a better tool out there. Um, if someone said, you know what, Mark, what CRM do you recommend? That's my number one choice. It is drive centric. But I will say this, to change CRMs is an absolute pain in the hindquarters uh you're changing up culture process everything if you're happy with your current CRM, uh stick with it you can bolt stuff on to make it fly but so like um, if, like an ai tool if their crm didn't have an ai tool mm -hmm. i mean you have connect you have impel you have conversica which Matador, one yeah, yeah Matador, Matador, one. which one do you have the most experience with in high performance dealers for sure. So obviously I've worked with Drive quite a bit and they've got their own, they call it Genius th that does that, which is very well, uh, obviously built in. But if for a plug-in for other CRMs, my two favorite absolute are Connect, or actually it's now ICOM. We got to call them correctly. It's ICOM oh, right. is, is in then uh, Impel. And so both take a little bit different approaches where Impel will actually use email and text Whereas uh, ICOM or Connect is only SMS. And so I first loved Impel more initial impressions because they did email. But as I've used the tool more, what I found is the connection that we get through email is about 13% connection rate. Where you see a huge jump to the 30s and 40% connection rate is through SMS. Hmm. And so therefore, when you look at the data, uh, there is a place for email, uh, but if you're considering an AI tool, I don't think email is, I got to look at all of them. And if they have email, great. If they don't have email, I still think you're going to be okay going with one. Oh, don't, that pen, just, yeah. don't penalize an AI tool. Correct. Or only, okay. That's, that's fair. So yep. Mark, when, when I consider all the dealers who are listening to this podcast, I am absolutely confident that most will say, yeah, we may have AI. I'm not sure if we're using it right. Um, I'm not sure if we're coordinating our manual processes in the most efficient way. I I'm not sure, as you mentioned, that all my email templates are set up right. And that's mm -hmm. where you come in. When, when a dealer says, hey, Mark, how long is it going to take for me to see a noticeable lift and change in performance and and connection rates that uh, you know mm -hmm. comes down to appointments, um, mm -hmm. what does that process look like for a dealer who hires you? Yeah, great question. So typically, uh, it really depends the state that the dealership is in. So if they are like horrific and they're, they're at a three percent closing ratio, I'll make an immediate impact and get them at least a six to eight percent within thirty days. Like that's just going to happen for a better process, right? It's just better engagement, better process, uh, better training on how to communicate and talk with consumers on the phone. Um, you notice I didn't necessarily say scripts, uh, but it's just about how we're communicating on the phone. And so, but for the store that let's say they're at eight percent, nine percent, and they want to get better, they're actually pretty. They consider themselves good. I think that first 30 days, you're going to see an uh, impact uh, and within 60 to 90 days. We've moved that needle up, but to create a sustainable change, that's the key word right there, Brian, is a sustainable change. 
it's going to take anywhere between four and six months mm-hmm. because yep. it's not about process. It's not about an email template. It's not about a, a text template. It's about changing the culture, the thinking, the ideology of that department. And so that takes time. And so as long as the decision maker, and that's whether that's the GM, the leader principal, whoever that may be, whoever the decision maker is for that store and the BDC or internet director are involved in the process and changing it, it will be successful. I can honestly say the only times when I've trained a store, a store has hired me and it has not worked and we've not sold more cars, not just a couple more cars, but actually we moved that needle was when the decision maker was not involved. Training is not a magic wand. Like me coming in a template, a process, it, the, sustainability happens through accountability, period, in a story. And if that accountability is not there, there's only so far you can go. You know, and I'm glad you're uh, candid because any dealer uh, knows that there is no magic wand for process, but where you come in just on this brief call, you know, if you if somebody said, hey, what's the difference between Connect and Appel? I, I, I probably that wouldn't have come off the top of my head to say, oh, Impel does email and texting and Connect now with a new n- new name, ICOM, um, just SMS. I really haven't gotten an update on say, hey, where's the best uh, dollar spent for a new CRM? This is really helpful, not only to me, but for everyone who's listening. Let's talk a little bit about the role of digital retailing now, Mm -hmm. right? Because um, during COVID, it was the rage. And now still, you know, less than 3% of all sales are really done from someone who went all the way through. There's some exceptions, maybe with Polestar or, Mm -hmm. you know, the other unicorns. But for the most part, digital retailing has become a super lead, a more transparent lead, uh, mm-hmm. maybe a richer data lead. So whether it's Roadster, CarNow, Gubagoo, uh, any of the tools that are on the market today, it seems to me that there's a growing trend of like, hey, it's just another lead. But to me, it's like you should be responding and getting them back in the tool, using the links. You should be coaching them on how to move the transaction forward. What's your thought process to dealers who right now think that their staff is underutilizing their DR tool? Absolutely. I mean, and I still believe there's a place for DR. Uh, you know, I think people were thought that would change the world and we're all going to transact online and that's not the case. But I, I haven't heard the word super lead and I love that. Um, because what I what I train on when that DR tool comes into the to uh, the CRM, what I train on is that is one of the best leads you can get. Why that customer spent I don't know two minutes filling out stuff, give or take. What is a minute and a half? You know, I use Google Chrome. If I want to do a lead form submission, it's just a standard box. You know, get a price. I double click that. My information goes in there. Boom! I send it out. Right within you know five seconds, I submit, gave you my That's information. Right. But if I took the time, right, to work my payment up, work my trade up, do all that, put a VIN in, right? Hey, can you find the VIN to your car you're trading right now? Right, you have to go track that down. And, and so what happens is is that it becomes a very sticky lead. And so you got to have DR. And not only that, what I found with digital retail, the, the most successful ones fully embrace it. Number one. Number two is, is that they have a, a chat feature built into the DR. I'm going to use car now because I know car now very well. It's not just a, a static form where the customer walks down the, the DR themselves. They will walk them through a trade process. What's the VIN? How many miles? And so it's not just a static form. And, and so that, again, that creates a sticky factor, a more natural way for the consumer to fill out that information and the conversion rates on these DR tools that have a chat or even a bot that's built into it helps create a better conversion rate than just a standalone DR tool where the consumer has to do everything themselves. There's no interaction from the tool at all. They just got to go through it. And so uh, 
but the bottom line is, is people got all the data that's out there. You know, dealers are like, I'm scared to give the price. I'm scared to give my trade value, bro. They're going to get them somewhere. <laughs> right. Right. Get them. <laughs> if you're not going to give it to them, you're really driving them to the guy who does. And, and that's, that's what I've been trying to tell dealers is like, Hey, you have the tool. And when you get this appointment, man, pick up where you left off, use the same tool. Don't surprise oh. with a new look, a new interface. Uh, it, it's, it's interesting as I work with the Morgan Auto Group or the Crown Automotive Group or the Warren Henry Auto Group. These are all Florida dealers now that mm -hmm. I'm living in Florida. They're all so focused on, we got to use the same tools online and in the store. We have a, have a connected retail experience. And, and Crown won an award at the Modern Retailing Conference, the MRX Award for Customer Experience. Mm -hmm. They're completely paperless end to end completely wow. paperless. It's amazing. So um, I agree with you, Mark. Give the tools. Train what, can, I, can I address DR one one other thing yeah. why people don't do it? The, with our first response, and I love the fact you said about creating that kind of more seamless process. We cannot communicate the same way to them that when that DR lead comes in as they get an e-price form. Your message has to address everything that customer did. Did they do a trade? Address the trade value. Ask them about that trade value. Ask them about the payment. Ask them about their interest rate. Because this consumer just went in and they got a trade value. They got an interest rate. They got a payment. What if they didn't like that? What if the trade value was too low? Because who likes a trade value? No one, right? right? And so you've got your, your messaging that you're sending to the consumer after has to communicate about what, what they thought about the payment, what they thought about the trade, what they thought about everything else. Again, it's about engagement, period, in a story. But if you just treat this consumer like a normal get an e-price or you know check availability, you will not be successful. And that's why many dealers aren't as successful with DR because they're handling them like they've done every other lead they've had for the last 10 years. You know, and it's no secret that my brother Glenn's out uh, helping uh, dealers just like you, helping yep. the sales process. And the same stories we're talking about today, he's sharing as well. And finally, finally, I think, Mark, mm -hmm. we're, you know, if we were honest, the biggest problems with our sales process is consistency, uh, yep. you know, gaps when people are out sick. Um, I think AI can fill some of those gaps, but there has to be an intelligent plan in play. And, and this is where, when that guy said, hey, Mark, man, your job's on the line and you kind of laugh. It's like, hey, man, um, AI don't know what I know about. <laughs> AI doesn't know what I know about human response to a trade. And we need to make sure our workflows, our templates, our tone is correct to really make the customer feel appreciated, engaged, and come into the store. And that's why I wanted to have you on this podcast because I'm 100% confident that more dealers need your set of eyes on their sales process um, to leverage your experience on how to integrate AI and then how to best position their DR tools to create better engagement online and then connect that into the store. And well, I'm so proud of the success you've had, but more importantly, uh, I know the dealers that you've helped and they have nothing but positive words to say. This is not a hype session. This is <laughs> like a pep rally. Uh, and there's enough of that out there. Um, yeah. This is real tactical help and support. Mark, when you're not in the dealership, how do you help with accountability. You mentioned that, right? Yes. Obviously the management has to hold their team accountable. How do you hold people accountable remotely as well? Absolutely. You know, and that's one of the things that I pride myself on is I don't just come into a store, train, high five, see you later, right? Because the last thing I want to do is spend all that time, all that energy, all that effort, come back in 30 days and we're back to the same square one. So with my clients I work with, I do what we call a mirror shop. Did this when I was working with you. 
I jump in the CRM. I don't need a mystery shop. You forget mystery shops. You got enough leads in there, real life right. leads, you know? So I'm going to jump in there and record my screen. And I'm going through about a 10 to 20 minute uh, recording for the dealer, general manager, whoever the eyes need to see and the BDC internet team can learn and coach from everybody. And so I walk through live leads. What are they saying? What are they doing? What's What are their responses? Uh, you know, uh, what is the replies back to the consumer? I basically do a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with, I don't know, probably 10 leads, at, you know, maybe more, depends on how fast it goes, and sit down and, and just, this is what's really happening. Like you said, you can sit there and go, yeah, boss, I made my call, did my text, I completed my task, but guess what? Did you actually call that consumer? Did you actually email the consumer? And so dealers don't know what they don't know. And as a dealer or GM, their job is not to be in the weeds, right? I help in, in, them get in the weeds if, for a time that, that works for them, right? And so I give them the weeds. <laughs> I go, here you go, right? This is what's going on. This is what needs to change and whatnot. And beyond that, I had a dealer text me late last night. Hey, Mark, I'm concerned about this store. Can you look at them? Talked to them this morning. You know, uh, I feel like our appointments are down. Can you look into it? And sure enough, went into their saw what's going on. Their activity compared to the other sister store was about 30%, right? Down, meaning their calls, texts, and emails. And so you compare 30% over 800 leads, that's a lot of activity that that's doesn't right. happen. And But the dealer goes, I think something's wrong. I just don't know why. That's so right. I get that text. I do it. Boom. There you go. Well, I... I, I... Really uh, glad you took some time out of your schedule to talk about this. Um, I think what's exciting is now we have some new tools, uh, updated tech platforms, and new philosophies on how to connect with today's more sophisticated online shopper. Mark, if a dealer is interested in having you take a look, just like you said, under the hood, see yep. what they're doing, get some feedback, maybe turn that into a consulting project. What's the best way to get in touch with you? Without a doubt. So you can, uh, I'm going to, you'll put the link I'm sure in the podcast, but my direct cell phone is 817-528-0392, 817-528-0392. Or you can go to my website, which is mcgurnconsulting.com. Um, harder to spell, but it's mcgurnconsulting.com. Reach out if you just want to have a conversation. Don't think about if you want to reach out of going, well, I'm going to pitch. No, man. If we want to have a conversation, if you want me to poke my head into your CRM, do a Zoom call, I'm open. My passion is helping dealers. I, that is what allows me to be away and travel so much is I get so much joy and so much for, for, fulfillment of helping the employees and the dealers that I work with. Because in the day is my tagline is I'm helping dealers become more efficient productive and profitable. And if I do those three things, but it all starts with efficiency, which AI, DR, everything we're talking about is an efficiency aspect. You then can do more. When you do more, you're more productive, you make more money. That example that we talked about last night, they're 30% on beyond activity, even though they got more leads, guess what? The numbers don't lie. The, day, the, the dough is in the data. The data showed they got to do more if they want to make more. How do you do more? You got to be more efficient. How do you be more efficient? You talk to me and I can help you. <laughs> so that's, Well, listen, that is uh, an easy recipe for our listeners to follow. And of course, you can connect with Mark uh, McGurn on LinkedIn as well. Um, yes. I encourage dealers, as you think about your strategy for 2024, re I just want to make a reminder. Consumers need to know you have cars on the lot because for the last few years, they've been scarce and hard to find. You have to remind them that there's rebates and incentives now, and even 0% financing. You need mm -hmm. to remind them of your value proposition, and you have more tools than ever to reach out and communicate, but it needs a master plan. It needs Correct. a recipe that is going to yield higher engagement, higher appointments, and higher sales. And that's what Mark has worked out. He's technology independent. Whatever your mm -hmm. CRM, whatever tools you have, he'll make them work together. Or if you're out shopping, there's probably no one better to consult before you sign that contract to make sure you have the right tech in place to achieve the 
customer experience that you want for 2024. Mark, thanks again for coming on board and talking with me. And for everyone who's listening, you should know that this is one of hundreds of interviews I've done on my podcast. So just go to your favorite podcast listening channel and type in Brian Pash podcast, and you'll be able to connect with many great interviews uh, that I've had over the years. And I hope to see many of you at our next big conference. That is the Digital Marketing Strategies Conference, June 2nd, 3rd, and 4th in Austin, Texas. And of course, uh, I'll be in uh, Las Vegas for the NADA convention this year in February. So I hope uh, you'll take a moment to stop by and let me know how you've been enjoying the podcast. Thanks so much for your time and I'll catch you next time on another podcast interview.